your glory. What will my heart say? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or will I, <laughs> or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or will I, my knees, will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Or will I be able to say nothing at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. You're probably wondering what this song has to do with my being here in front of you today after being a member for a month. Well, it's not really related specifically to the song, but it's related to the movie that I want to make a connection with that I watched just before I became a Toastmaster, or shortly after, I can't remember. So the movie is also by the same name. It is I Can Only Imagine. It came out in March of 2018, last year, and it's about Bart Millard who is the composer and a member of the band Mercy Me. He wrote the song based on his very complicated relationship with his father who was abusive throughout his life. And I just want to share a little bit about the story, about the movie line, before I uh, talk to you about why I'm here. So Bart Millard wrote the song after he attended his father's funeral. Throughout his life, he had an abusive dad, like I said, so he didn't have a very good relationship with him. But his father found Christ, or Jesus, at the end of his life, and because of that, they were able to reconcile just before he died of pancreatic cancer. And at the funeral, one of the people said to him, I can only imagine what it's going to be like if your father would introduce Jesus in heaven. And it struck a chord in him, and he went home, and he looked through his journals, and he noticed that I can only imagine the words that kept on repeating in his life. Once, when he was a little boy, and the girl who he eventually marries has said, I want to marry you. She says, I can only imagine what it would be like. And then, he, during his music career, or when he's trying to start his music career, he's written in his journal, I can only imagine what my career is going to be like. And then at the last um, scene, like I told you, close to the end, is that family friend saying, I can only imagine. And he writes the song in 10 minutes. So when, if I were, if you were to ask me before I watched that movie, why I joined Toastmasters, I would have told you, you know what? My dad has asked me to be the MC at his club Christmas dance. And he said, you better not spoil the family name, Alice. So. <laughs> I thought, okay, maybe I should join Toastmasters. Maybe I'll be more prepared for November, the end of November. But when I look back at my life, there are three times that I can distinctly remember, only now having watched the movie and reflecting on it. The first was when my, at my mom's funeral in 1996, and my uncle gave the eulogy, very quiet and a seeming man. And people after came up to me and said, your, your uncle's amazing. Please thank him for us. And I thought to myself, yes, I have to thank him too. So I said, Uncle Jules, you know, how did you come up with such an amazing speech? And he says, Alice, don't you know, your aunt and I have been members of Toastmasters for years. And then another uh, event happened. And what was that? Since I did my first speech. <laughs> um, I went uh, to the, my visit, my, one of my best friends I've known since I was 10. It was during the blackout in 2003, and she took me to my first Toastmasters meetings. I had forgotten about it. And I remember standing up, introducing myself, and even though I'm used to being up in front of people, I thought, oh my goodness, this is, this is kind of tough, right? If you're happy to be in a room full of strangers. And then the last one was, um, what happened last one? Anyway, there was one other incident where you know, Toastmasters. Oh, I was at the airport, I was training, and I was by myself, a group of people invited me over for the restaurant, at the restaurant, and they ended up being the most amazing group of people, and they were on their way to a competition in, um, no, no, somewhere in the States. And they welcomed me in, and I thought, what a great group of people, I'd love to be a part of that energy. 
So, like I said, if you had asked me before why I joined Toastmaster, it might have been the meeting uh, that is going to take place where I have to say how I'm going to be a great MC at this Christmas party. Could be, uh, in my experience, by meeting coincidentally in 2012, uh, Pelly Williams, who's the president of T Twin Towers, who asked me in 2012 to join with her to do uh, white youth leadership programs in the library. But as a TEDx uh, speaker just told, just who I just watched, Eva Dunayer says, to accomplish a goal, you have to take that first step. And here I am at my icebreaker, taking that first step. I don't know what the journey's going to be, and why I'm really here. I can only imagine. Mm -hmm.